it's always worth offering a, a recap, a summary. Ring implants is a technique in search of for a theory, and at least for me, it is very clear that this cannot work if we do not know what we are doing. It's important uh, how they work, and this is uh, it, it is important to know how they work. Uh, we often refer to the thickness law by Jose Baraker, my uncle, but we have to understand that uh, these implants are at very deep. There is no thickness effect in this case, and uh, so the thickness uh, law has nothing to do with the action of ring implants in the cornea. In the cornea, if it is not a problem of thickness, we have a, a biomechanical problem. And actually, there is always a biomechanical phenomenon. So an implant occupies a space in the cornea, and the collagen lamella are forced to um, bypass, to detour uh, around the implant, uh, and uh, there is an increased uh, tension in the collagen lamella, a compression effect. If we understand that it is a problem of, of compression, then it's easier to understand what this means. Cornea is a very complex uh, curvature. We can uh, decompose it. Uh, there is an increased curvature in myopia, but uh, a decreased cornea in astigmatism. We can decompose it like uh, the mathematicians uh, do with other curves. And another reason of complexity is that uh, many combinations are possible. We can combine different uh, implants, different thickness, uh, different uh, sides, uh, and this increases the degree of complexity exponentially. How can we apply them then? First of all, we have to understand that Assuming a compressive effect, you can have a local effect when there is an increase in the curvature of the axis, and you can also have a general effect. There is a general flattening as it happens in a cornea transplantation. So we have to move from increase in curvature to decrease in curvature, and this happens when the rings become more circular. How can we correct coma? And this is really easy to understand uh, with the Zernike uh, schema. Astigmatism is a quadrantic aberration. You see the graph, and coma is only half a circle, it's one direction. It is a hemispheric aberration. It is simpler, but it is not necessarily easier. And anyway, it is not necessarily along the same direction as astigmatism. What are the possible combinations? We can put either one or two implants that can be equal, paired, or asymmetric. And there is also axiality that is important. We can have it uh, along the axis, so actual or non-actual, so not along the axis. And with these two components, we can have uh, four types. We can have the typical regular bow tie uh, astigmatism. This is not very frequent. Uh, and we can also have a, a crescent uh, asymmetric ectasia, markedly displaced infratemporal 
Coma is in green, it is very close to uh, flat astigmatism. One implant uh, can do the job. In uh, cases of high astigmatism, you could also put another implant, but it must be very small in order to avoid to lose effect of coma. And then you have more difficult cases where the coma axis is relatively closer than uh, the curved axis of astigmatism. It is uh, hard to uh, tackle the two problems together. You can use a, a larger implant. When astigmatism is very high, you can also add a, a smaller implant, a second smaller implant, uh, and uh, you can uh, have uh, two implants, like in this case, when you have this uh, snowman pattern. This is the most uh, difficult uh, case. You can have uh, two rings, two implants, uh, and you have more effect on coma. So this is the classification. This is a study we presented last year, uh, 1,000 cases. This is the distribution, 10% for the symmetric actual type. Uh, the majority asymmetric actual, and then uh, also the others, but uh, lower numbers. This is not always the same. You see, there is a larger group of known actual. The problem is uh, where to put the threshold between actual and non actual. Age distribution, you see that uh, one group is uh, in around. 30 years of age, it's a different group than in cross-linking, I mean mainly males. And anyway, you see results in terms of visual equity. There is a six-line increase, up to 15 lines, according to Lomark. This is the formulation, the formula that we have applied to translate uh, the log marks into lines, and you see the best corrected visual equity, and you see visual equity progression. You see without correction and uh, corrected, and this is a group of over 500 cases followed up for at least one year. And uh, BSCVA keeps uh, progressing, as you can see. And uh, other analysis, uh, astigmatism, you see at uh, six months and uh, uh, one year, you see that uh, the curve of stability, as you can see in the graph at the bottom, and here other possibilities, the grades of keratoconus as a function of the pre-op uh, grade, and you see that there is a uh, visual equity gain, a gain of two or more lines, and uh, with correction uh, there is uh, a gain of two lines in more severe cases. The gain is more marked in more severe cases, which is logical. And another analysis is ICRS combinations. Very interesting. This is very interesting. Single ICRS have better uh, result. They fare better than uh, two ICRS combinations for uncorrected and best corrected visual equity. This is interesting, in my opinion. And uh, there is a gain of uh, one or more lines. Uh, similar for all our ICRS combinations, both for uncorrected and best corrected visual equity, one year. This shows that the surgeon was right in choosing the implants. This technique must be analyzed. Every combination should be analyzed uh, separately and then Statistics can be analyzed in many different manners. This is the main component analysis. Uh, this is a statistic manipulation that shows that there are factors such as age, uh, gender, laser, etc. 
that concentrate in the center, it means that they do not really affect the result. While the blue uh, circle correlates with uh, the change in astigmatism, it means that uh, the higher the astigmatism preoperatively can have uh, um, the, the better the improvement post-op. And in green we have K-max. It is one of the most important uh, factors. Um, for uh, that confirms that K-max correlates well with the higher change in uh, K-max and sphere, but inversely with uh, uncorrected, uh, less corrected visual equity improvement. Uh, very high curvature cases uh, tend to improve less from the visual equity point of view. And summary, and this is confirmed in the literature, ICRS are effective for keratoconus in cases that are mild to moderate. This is the only conservative technique that is really reversible, adjustable, and that can address astigmatism, sphere and coma independently or separately. We have to understand the mechanism of action and we have to bear in mind that the selection of the right ICRS combination position is paramount. It is also important uh, to decide to correct astigmatism uh, with the toric aisle. If you use a toric aisle, uh, you have to uh, put it on the right axis, otherwise it is useless. And before leaving you, I want to invite you uh, to save this date. June 2018, there will be the World Ophthalmology Congress in Barcelona. You're all invited. Thank you.